You don't have any idea how we're going to escape this subway passage, do you? Adam remarks. Please don't tell me you're making this up as you go. The question has been gnawing away at his brain for quite a while now. A loud noise interrupts any answer that might have come out of his enigmatic rescuer's mouth, however, as a large paint approaching them with tremendous speed fills Adam's readouts. We've got company, he cries to Riptide, his sweaty palms already reacting to the radar's warning. Bringing the vehicle's gun around, what he finds is not a mecha, nor a troid. Rather, it is a gargantuan train with six humongous gun barrels protruding from its front car like spears. Holy smokes! It must be the assault train Garfish! I've heard of it, gulps Adam, but I didn't actually think it was still in service! Doesn't make a difference to me. It's not every day you get to fight a piece of living history. Should be interesting. Riptide responds plainly, a smile tugging at his lips. The only vehicle ever built with the designation assault train, the legendary Garfish was used by the WDC against the stronger remnant Iron Revolution faction warlords following the official IRF's catastrophic defeat at San Francisco. The massive train used the subterranean network linking the unions of the USU and would be raised through special hatches at designated bombardment points. It was believed to be damaged beyond repair outside of Sacramento and was rumored to be sealed away in an abandoned part of the USBS-1 or Universal Subway System-1. But, in truth, Ohin has used his growing influence to resurrect it and keeps it as a personal prize. All of a sudden, various hatches and lids pop open all over the giant train's sides and roof, revealing numerous Gatling guns, missile tubes, and energy batteries that effectively increase its menacing appearance tenfold. All right. Can't say I share your enthusiasm, but it doesn't look like we've got much of a choice here. Adam tightens his grip on the main gun, nervously biting the corners of his tongue, while his eyes stare into the barbed face of the metal beast in the center of his targeting sights. Inside the battleship train, the willowy, black-maned, angular-faced Captain Valerie Fate stands erect at a communications console. Warden, I'm well acquainted with our arrangement, but if I didn't owe you for all the times you've helped me escape a court-martial, I would not be placing my life on the line for you. Yes, but of course, my dear, I appreciate every bit of help in this matter. If you succeed, I'll see that you are immune to the Supreme Commander's courts. She frees a high-pitched, cynical cackle. You don't have that kind of power, insolent fool, and you know that. Just keep me away from your prisons, Terence Court. Besides, you know how I like thrills, hmm? The captain notes, her long-nailed fingers stroking the borders of the vid screen. I enjoy a good chase, and this train has seen far too few in this peacetime, she purrs, displaying a feline's grin. Captain Fate has been known to be treacherous in combat, as well as with orders handed down to her. By disobeying commands far too many times, she has ended up in countless military prisons. Court, however, finds delight in her treasonable acts and believes that the coming era will need such a soldier to keep it under control. Therefore, the warden has been forgiving of the ambitious captain, cutting deals for her time and again to escape the law and return to duty. Knowing that she is in command of the Garfish, he takes full advantage of her current position. Very well, then. Pleasant hunting, Captain. Turning away from the console, Fate barks. Destroy these worms! Unload all weapons on them. I want to make this fun, she remarks, relishing each and every word. Seeing the energy beginning to gather on his threat screen, Riptide disconnects from the rails and roughly drags his tank toward the adjacent track. Latching onto those rails, he returns the boost to full output. This results in the first mad volley of the immensely powerful train missing its mark, and it switches its computerized targeting scopes to the other rail. Predicting the switch from the targeting program, Riptide again retracts the sled mode treads and reactivates his magnetic treads. The war wagon's charged treads go spinning right up the concave wall of the steel subway, and Riptide rides it sideways, a feat that seems impossible to the technicians manipulating the Garfish's weaponry. The barrage of missile, bullet, and energy fire is incessant as Riptide slides from the left wall to the right and then back again, like a futuristic toboggan. All the while, the fervent attack from the Garfish turns the subway into one huge fireball, which the assault train constantly emerges from to take the lead, only to fall behind again as its missed shots build it yet another wall of fire to break through. Jeez, how long can they keep this up? It's crazy! Adam yells over the explosion-filled commune link, his harness struggling to hold him steady, while he attempts to blast off some of the train's frontal weaponry. As long as they want to. 
But I've let them have their way long enough, states the stoic Riptide. You mean this old tank's got some more tricks left in it? Adam utters in disbelief. Even if it does, though, the WDC fugitive wonders what sort of trick can stand up to a speeding hunk of metal bristling with guns. You guessed it. Pulling down on a combination of peculiar levers and switches, the tank begins to tremble under the grinding of a complex network of custom-embedded servos and gears. Hang on. Adam hears faintly through his commune set a nanosecond after. He feels his gunner's chamber sliding forward and hears a whining coming from the base of the twin-barreled main gun. What's going on? is all a grimacing Adam can get out of his mouth, sensing more changes occurring throughout the war wagon, and bracing himself for whatever might come next to the point of being white-knuckled. The separated tread sets push backward and reconfigure like cube puzzles, the forward pair into angular arms and hands, the rear pair into bulky legs and feet. Riptide's stomach feels the entire war wagon flip erect as his cockpit is brought down into the chest of the curious figure being formed, and the canopy is quickly covered by a layer of thick metal. Finally, a yellow-tinted main camera pops up that is protected by a helmet-like casing, giving the bipedal machine the visage of an abstract soldier. The demi-bion formed from this intricate transformation carries its tank form's bulky primary gun over its shoulders, one barrel over each, with two gaunt hanging handlebars mounted at either side. The gunner's module has become an armored boost backpack for the mecha, and a giant rifle-shaped firearm is holstered on its right tread leg. We just underwent a technical flux. The Freedom Maker is in mobile attack mode now, which is very similar to a bionic mecha. Riptide explains briefly to the speechless Adam. There's no holding back now.